Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. This phone call sponsored by GoDaddy. Call from Smith Jason. This phone call sponsored by GoDaddy.com. This is Chris. Hey, Chris. Hey. It's RCP from the chat. What's that? It's RCP from the chat. Oh, hey, how you doing? Good, you? I'm doing well, so you're the first of five calls. You got a question? Yeah, I do. Um, how do you overclock a, you know, um, you know, motherboard without using the BIOS? Can you use a special software or... Uh, why do you want to overclock your motherboard? Well, right now I'm running at, like, 2.4 gigahertz on one of my computers. I want it to, like, you know, basically make it faster. And I tried doing it using the BIOS, and it sucks. Yeah, you yeah. kind of... <laughs> You kind of have to use the BIOS because that's the whole, well, basic input-output mm -hmm. system. Uh, without it, your computer is not going to function. Now, of course, yeah. some people are jumping up and down saying, change the jumpers, change the jumpers, change the jumpers. Uh, if you're, you're not necessarily overclocking your motherboard necessarily, you're overclocking or trying to overclock your processor, and, and that's largely going to be tied into your BIOS. Now, if you've already pushed it about as far as it can go and it can't go any further, um, it may be your platform in and of itself that needs tweaking, not necessarily some type of software optimization itself. If the hardware can't do it, no amount of software is going to be able to make it do that which right the hardware I'm can't to, do. I'm using um, um, ClockGen, and it's working really good because um, overclocking about 45%, and so I had to switch it over to water cooled. Is, is that good or is it bad? Because whenever I go doing it in the BIOS, well, what happens is it tells me that... Um, it basically frees up my computer. Uh, if you're doing it one way and it's working for you, stick with it. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, if it's not, don't. Uh, protocol just recommended go to your motherboard's website. Could be a program there, uh, either that or a BIOS update, depending on who manufactures your motherboard. Uh, that may address the issues of it locking up if you're trying it in hardware. If, it sounds like you've already tried it in software and you're just asking yeah. if it's okay. Well, well software is working, but I'm trying to figure out a better, you know, software wise. Um, right is now, it better? Well, I. It all kind of boils down to what you're going for, and if the end of day is getting more performance out of your hardware, yeah. uh, and it's working in software, then you know, fine, leave it be. Uh, I I'd be very leery about that uh, because you know, the software may be reporting something inconsistent with the hardware. Uh, and it, again, it may boil down with your the, the specific revision of the BIOS on the motherboard and whether or not it's actually going to work for you or not. I, again, um, I would have to go with protocol on this one. Check your motherboard's website to see if there's a BIOS update or any software that may be officially endorsed by the manufacturer to allow for um, you know a better uh, uh, synchronization between the software and the hardware itself. Okay, thanks. No problem. Overclocking is like one of those geeky topics that I seldom get into just because it's such a geeky topic. And honestly, uh, my mom will never overclock anything. Uh, she, well, she, she, tr phone call sponsored by she, 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 phone call sponsored by she tried sponsoring her purse. This phone call sponsored by GoDaddy. Or, I mean, overclocking her purse. <laughs> Sorry, I've got the, uh, ringtone on the brain here. This is Chris. Yes, Chris? Yes. I have something very important to say. Oh no. And that is Drew Beard. Oh, Drew Beard. Uh, Drew Beard was the handle of uh, um, one of the community members um, from a while ago. Uh, Drew. Drew was a good guy. I really miss Drew. He had a beard, too. That's why his name was Drew Beard. This is Chris. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hello. Uh, okay, now I got one question for you. Sure. Okay. So, wait. Uh, my question. Wait. Oh, yeah. It was like, 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 what is the best free web hosting site? What's a free web hosting site? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't no, know. No, no, I'm not like, like, what one's the best one? What's the best one? Well, the best one yeah. is the one that's in your budget and the one that stays up and running all the time, or most of the time. I've heard uh, oneinone.com uh, has been pretty good uh, and relatively affordable. Um, some people like Media Temple. I was on them for a little while. It didn't quite work uh, like I was hoping it would work. 
Um, my web host is a little more expensive than average. Uh, I use webair.com, but then again, I run my own servers. I'm co-located, so we actually have our own hardware that we run on. Uh, RCP recommended dot dot tk says it's good and free. Well, that's interesting. X10hosting.com is all free. Says D3TOX. So you know, uh, you know, try try a few of them and see which one you like the most, and of course, whichever one fits your budget is the the one that's right for you. And GoDaddy also yeah. has hosting as well. Yeah, well, you know, I, don't, I want something for free. That one's always better. It's well, better. people are people are suggesting yeah. free ones right here. There you go. Yeah, like, yeah. that's what you need. It a lot. That's what you're it looking a lot. for. No problem. It's what we do. We kind of answered that question. I think uh, when was it? It was a couple days ago, uh, or if not, I know it was in recent memory that uh, someone was asking for that, and a lot of people came forward with a lot of really good recommendations. All right, I think uh, we won't count. Drew Beard as a call, so we've got room for three more this phone questions. Call sponsored by this phone call sponsored by this, phone this is Chris. Hi, uh, Chris. Yes. I have a question. Um, I've been looking at computers, and um, what, as far as media, what do you prefer, HP or Dell? As far as media goes, could you clarify that point? As in gaming and um, watching videos. Sure. Uh, you know, honestly, and I realize they're both going to hate me for it, but uh, all things equal, they're pretty much equal. I mean, it boils down to the hardware configuration more than anything. Both of them are going to run Windows Vista or XP. Uh, they're going to have likely the same components in it. Uh, and if not, then you've kind of got to boil it down to which one of those two brands is, number one, in your price range and specifically has hardware, good hardware, fast hardware, uh, in that price range that you're looking to shop in. Uh, the good news is is that I think either one of those manufacturers has one computer or another that's going to serve you just fine and you're not going to need to spend um, you know, too much money on one over the other. Um, the thing you want to watch out for, if you're looking for specifically just playback optimization, correct? Um, optimi uh, no, playback. Just playback, okay. Well, and the reason why I was asking is if you were doing a lot of video editing, I would certainly suggest something with, a, a number one, a, a faster hard drive, uh, but certainly also a faster processor. Uh, for playback, uh, you know, honestly, go with whichever one. Uh, you can you can configure e either one. I think Dell offers much more customization options at this point, but go with whichever one can get you either Blu-ray or HD DVD. In fact, I'm I've been a big HD DVD backer, but the reason why is because you know playback options are pretty soon you know going to be going that route. And certainly having a machine today that can play that kind of media, they're likely not going to sell it unless it's going to be able to handle uh, that kind of high level media. Of course, then you also have to worry about your monitor being able to support HD. DCP. That's a. I think we answered that question a few weeks ago. Uh, so um, you know, it, it just boils down to you know whichever is the better package for you. I mean, this is such a subjective question. I appreciate you asking it, but unfortunately, there is no answer. It's it's whatever one is is going to whichever one makes you feel better. <laughs> okay. Um, which one do you, what do you use for that kind of thing? What do I use? I've got a custom built machine here. So oh. it, it's neither HP nor Dell. They 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 haven't neither one of them have uh, have sent me a computer to uh, to test, if you will. So unfortunately, I'm not speaking from experience. Maybe oh. maybe now maybe after they hear me begging for it, maybe they will. And since they know that people are asking me what I use, maybe they'll follow it through. Okay. Thanks um, for asking. By the way, I'm oh yes, Nicholas from the chat room. Nicholas, okay, good to meet you. Meet you too. All right, thank you. So I think we've got time, uh, since we've kind of, these calls have kind of gone on a little longer, I think we've got uh, time for one more, and then we'll wrap it up for today. 888-747-4556. Don't you love this ringtone? I love this ringtone. That's so funny. All right. This is Chris. Hi, Chris. I use Minicam Virtual Webcam for Windows Vista. And I was wondering if there is a free program to record your webcam without converting the type of video, for example, the FLV to WMV. Okay, so you've got a video 
live video capture through a webcam. No, not a live video capture, oh. just a regular, um, if I want to record a regular video. You want to but, save um, it out as a format, but you don't want it to be converted? I'm not sure I understand um, the question exactly. Yeah, like, like, um, if, like a free recording software to record your webcam. I know Windows Movie Maker used to do it, but it doesn't do it anymore for Vista, so I was wondering if there was a free program to record it. Uh, looks like someone's recommending IM2MPEG. Uh, Virtual Dub is another program protocol uh, rec is recommending. Uh, someone says use the camera software. It may come with it. Cam Studio is a free one. Of course, TechSmith, uh, one of our sponsors, also produces a product. Not free, but they have, I think, w i got to look up the website. It's a... It's a free, it's a screencasting, uh... Yeah, Camp Asia Studio 4. Yeah, no, but they've, they've just recently released a, a different one that's specifically for s capturing things that you're doing on the screen. Um, you know, there, there, there are quite a few of them, and in fact, I was just looking at, um, a product, because I was looking to do some MP4 editing, and someone recommended, uh... Uh, a product uh, to me today it, it, that that runs on Windows, but it's it all these pro uh, programs, um, you know, are ultimately going to do the same thing. You're looking for free. You're looking for easy or you know something that's going to be able to to help you get things done. And and people are certainly recommending things. Virtual Dub uh, is probably the most configurable, uh, and it, of course yeah. is happens to be free. Scriptable, very very powerful for something in in such a, a, a tight package, if you will. Oh, okay. Super Thanks, West. Chris. It's Vince again, so... Oh, hey, Vince. Okay. You hey, can see... Um, okay. Yes. For quick answering. Okay. It's no problem. Yeah. Yep. Right. Take care. So, uh, okay, oh, crap. Uh, I, I gotta end this now, otherwise you guys will keep calling. Well, it's it's a good thing, so when we open up the phone lines again tomorrow, then uh, you can call back then. 888-PERILLO, or just swing by the chat room, live.perillo.com.